El Dorado, Shambhala, Asla, King Arthur's Camelot. All of these places are thought of as legends, or for some perhaps, cities lost to time. But just because a place is gone, it does not mean that it is forgotten. Far from it. If these and other missing locales were in some yet to be discovered lost and found dimension, then the city of Atlantis would be front and center. The Atlantean legend first told by Plato conjures images of underwater ruins and an island paradise. Everyone knows it, many have sought it, and to this day, despite lots of debunkings, some even believe they have found it. So just what was the city of Atlantis? A fantasy, a reality, or an alchemy of both? Either way, we'll bring the city to life for you today with our animation and show you just what Atlantis may have been like. Atlantis, an animated journey. To understand Plato's Atlantis, we first must know the man himself. He was a student of Socrates and later a teacher to Aristotle. But first and foremost, he was a philosopher. Plato was famous for his metaphors, in particular, the allegory of the cave. The meaning of it is too much to explain here, but the general idea is that you should learn to think for yourself. Another story by Plato many believe was written in allegory was that of Atlantis. Legend has it that eons ago, the gods of Olympus fought many long brutal conflicts with the horrors of what had come before. And when they were victorious, the gods carved up the earth. The place where Atlantis was to be fell under Poseidon's dominion. It is said the ocean god fell in love with a woman and that together they had five sets of twin male sons with her, but we'll talk more about them later. But it is believed Poseidon laid the foundations for Atlantis as a place to protect his young and their mother. And to do that, legend has it, Poseidon used his divine trident. That weapon is something very important for the Atlantean tale. The trident of Poseidon is said to have been fashioned by three cyclops. The trio of one-eyed monsters made the weapon to help the ocean god in a most difficult of quests. Poseidon, along with Zeus and Hades, were to do battle with the giants. And do battle they did. The fight between Poseidon and the giant Polybates shook the world. The Olympian is said to have used the trident to gain the upper hand against his foe and crush Polybates underneath an island. However, the trident wasn't only used for battle alone. No, it was also used to manufacture entire places and bodies of water. Legend has it that the entire island of Delos was created from a single thrust of the trident, but that wasn't the only place it was used to make. The ocean god himself is said to have made Atlantis. Legend has it, Poseidon made a palace for his family from a mountain. The ocean god then used the land to make natural aquatic defenses in the form of three moats that encircled the palace. It is said that these bodies of water and the land between them were each larger yet proportionate to the other. Poseidon had laid the foundations and the Atlanteans then made Atlantis. Over time, they are believed to have crafted links to the ocean, tunnels, interconnecting bridges, and walkways. According to the legend, the Atlanteans also erected great walls around each ring of the city. At the center of the city, the Atlanteans built a silver temple to Poseidon, surrounded by a wall of gold. Atlantis prospered. The land was fertile and rich in rare minerals and home to an impressive military force and island confederacy, led by Poseidon's ten sons. These men were all kings of Atlantis. The first, according to Plato, was a man named Atlas. Indeed, the place took its name from him. Atlantis translates to Island of Atlas after all. The other sons were given different islands to rule, but just who Atlas was is a matter of conjecture. Plato tells us that Atlas was the son of Poseidon and a mortal. However, others claim he was more than that, that he was the Atlas of legend, the Titan Colossus condemned by Zeus to support the heavens, but 
but whether he ruled Atlantis is a matter for another time. The kings ruled Atlantis as an island confederacy. They met every five and six years respectively, as a tribute to even and odd numbers. During these gatherings, they would discuss affairs of state and policy. Each was bound collectively to defend the other, and to never attack or usurp one another, at least not without the majority of the king's consent. However, the Atlanteans and their time in the sun was not to last. The story goes that Atlantis and Athens were at war. Atlantis was power mad and wanted more, but Athens would defeat them. See, the gods of Olympus despised what Atlantis had become and punished them for it. And soon their land was overrun by flooding and earthquakes, becoming lost to the ocean for all of time. Plato was told of the Atlantean legend by the Greek statesman Solon. He is said to have heard of Atlantis during his travels to Egypt. There, a priest named Sonkis told Solon of the rise and fall of the Atlantean Empire. But whether the Egyptian's tale was fiction or truth is not known. Plato and other accounts put Atlantis somewhere in the Mediterranean Sea, near the Strait of Gibraltar. It is described as a mountainous island paradise, the size of ancient Libya and Asia Minor combined. The city proper is thought to have been well protected at the centre of the island. Some reckon it has been found in Africa, in a place that is said to ring true with Plato's description of the lost city. That place is here in the deserts of northern Africa. This natural wonder was discovered by NASA from space in 1965. It's called the Rikat structure, but is also known as the Eye of the Sahara. Much of the following is not based on actual scientific research, but claims of several reports. Atlantis was believed to exist in the Strait of Gibraltar. The Eye of the Sahara in northern Mauritania is regionally close to that locale. Several reports note that Plato's description of Atlantis lines up with the Eye of the Sahara. So, was this place Atlantis? Most academics agree that Plato's description and the story of Atlantis was just that, a story. But let's consider the notion that it was, that the Eye of the Sahara was where people lived. Well, going by Plato's original description, Atlantis was said to have existed several millennia before his time. 10,000 years, in fact. So surely there would have been some evidence of people living there, right? Well, there is. But it isn't the mythical Atlanteans. Archaeologists have in the past discovered Ocalian artifacts in the structure. These come from hundreds of thousands of years ago. They were discovered around the structure's outermost parameters by French scientist Theodore Monod in 1974. Further mapping of the area indicates it was likely used for tool development and hunting. But the beings who inhabit these parts were most likely not some hyper-advanced civilization birthed by a Greek god. They were probably early humans, as they used stone tools such as hand axes to craft and get by. If any of them did live within the Rikat structure, they would most likely not have inhabited grand palaces. Quite the opposite. They would have lived in simple huts, as hunter-gatherers in a vastly different world to the one Plato detailed. But others have detailed other theories about Atlantis. Some reckon Atlantis was actually near the Bermuda Triangle, and was swallowed by it thousands of years ago. They point to rocks on the ocean floor that look like walkways. Scientists say these are natural rock formations. Others believed Atlantis was, in fact, Antarctica, and that the city was lost beneath the ice thousands of years ago. This theory was detailed in a work by Charles Hapgood in 1958. But this was written at a time when we didn't fully comprehend the science of shifting plates. Nowadays, we know much more, and modern science doesn't reckon that there is a frozen city somewhere beneath the frozen continent. A Swedish academic once claimed that the place was not underwater at all and that the island of Ireland was, in fact, the lost city. Not only that, but the island's geography was believed to have matched Plato's description, and some of the island's tombs were connected to Atlantean temples of Poseidon in this theory. Other theories note that it may have been in the Black Sea, or that Plato was simply discussing the Minoan culture. So just what was Atlantis? Well, for now, most of the evidence points to it being just a story by Plato a myth concocted from his imagination, a 
legend to demonstrate the superiority of Athens above even the most advanced of civilizations. A fable from thousands of years before his time. And his time was more than two millennia ago. What we do know is that the story has captured the hearts and minds of men and women for thousands of years, and it will continue to do so. But if there's anything to take away from Plato's story of Atlantis, it is caution. The Atlanteans became a hyper-advanced civilization and wealthy empire. Yet, despite all they had, they wanted more. Their kindness turned to greed. Or in other words, the path beyond the power zenith leads to nowhere but oblivion, divine or otherwise. Was Atlantis real? And if it was, where do you think it was located? Is there something we missed? Are ancient civilizations beyond the understanding of current science? Write us a comment and tell us below. Also, check out our series on the scary predictions of Nostradamus. Thank you, Mistorian, for watching. And please like, share, subscribe, and ring those mighty bells of notification so you never miss a Myth Stories video. You all know YouTubers say this, but it really helps the channel. But as always, this isn't goodbye. This is just until the next mythical video.